All right, welcome back everyone as we're ready to start the quarterfinals. We are getting close to the end to find out who the first team is going to be to advance out of the America's open qualifiers to uh, to join the other teams Five waiting in the, the America's main qualifiers to turn to determine who goes or who the top two teams Reserve are time. to uh, represent the Americas regions for the Shanghai Major. We, uh, like I said, we're in the quarterfinals. We got Lonely Boys, which we've been following for a while now. They're going to be playing on our dire side, and they're going up against DIT. Dream is true. Now, Dream is true. They just beat UTE, and UTE had Bian on it, or B I A N. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. But uh, he used to be on, long, long time ago, he used to be on. One of the early iterations Five of Void remaining. Boys, which is one of the teams already made it into the main qualifiers. So unfortunately, his team got uh, got eliminated. But uh, in the re round previous Radiant to that, they uh, the Bian's team, UTE, they uh, they actually beat Merlini and Capitalist and Melk, uh, Purge, and who am I forgetting? I'm forgetting someone. Oh my goodness, they're really good too, and I'm completely forgetting them. I 100% apologize. You guys in chat probably know, Five but I'm actually going to cheat. Remaining. I'm going to look right now. Who is it? It's uh, Monib, who uh, I Reserve used to cast time. a long, long time ago when he was playing with the guys of uh, Hot Hands Hand Warmers. As, uh, his Dyer signature team pudge mid was absolutely crazy, but I uh, haven't got to see him play for a while. He was messing around with the team a, a while ago, maybe about a year ago with Merlini, and good to see him coming back and just playing a little bit, even if it's some fun games. But uh, yeah, they got eliminated by... Uh, that, uh, that team UTE, remaining. which uh, then eventually lost to DIT, and that's what got us now to Five the quarterfinals. But uh, speaking of the quarterfinals, let's uh, let's go over some of the teams that we have in the quarterfinals. Is we've got Reserve time. almost all of them. We've got DIT versus Lone Boy, and the one that we're going to be casting. That's going to be the first quarterfinals. Then we've got Mischief going up against S Class. We casted S Class yesterday as they knocked out Team YP. We've got T Show going up against the winner of Jaja XD, which I believe is XD Gamers, and TOVP. TOVP beat, um, oh, who did they beat that we were casting yesterday? Um, IGL, they beat IGL in uh, the round of uh, 32. And then we've got uh, the last quarterfinals is Elite Wolves going up against Lucini or Lucini Gaming, however you want to say it. I'm not really sure which one it is, so choose uh, whichever one you want. But uh, that's, uh, that should catch Radiant us up to where we are now. As uh, well, we're set for this first quarterfinals. Radiant to determine who will advance to the semifinals. This is still a best of one. And then starting in the semifinals, we start with best of threes. So the series get a little bit longer. But uh, this is where it's really going to start uh, start to be a little bit more difficult for Lonely Boys. Because they've been primarily sticking with a very similar strat. With slight variations throughout most of the tournament, but you can't kind of go with it the whole way. Teams are going to start figuring out what you're doing. So now they're going to have to Ten mix up their drafts a little remaining. bit as some of their heroes are getting banned out. Oracle getting banned out in the first phase. Now that Five might be something that Dream remaining. is True is just kind of sticking with. They don't like playing against the Oracle early, but look, they banned out the Outworld Reserve Devourer. Time. So they've obviously done some research. They know Lonely Boys really favor that hero. But uh, we can expect them to maybe fall back on some of their other more comfort comfort heroes like we saw the Wind Ranger mid. For bacon as well and he did uh he did work on that yesterday but, uh, let's let's actually catch up and, and go over all the bands and and the picks so we're uh, we don't miss anything we've got gyrocopter and vengeful spirit banned out by lonely boys oracle as i already mentioned and jakiro banned out by dream is true that support duo that lonely boys has been sticking with for a while Dyer is gone as for our first two picks abaddon and darkseer picked up by lonely boys so getting their darkseer for pumpkin once again this time going with the Abaddon, which we saw Cheesehead play last game. Dream is True picked up Undying and Invoker. So we're going to see the Invoker. A lot of people were complaining about Invoker. It basically forced out a patch of 686C to nerf the Invoker, put his uh, his alacrity kind of in a place that might be a little bit more reasonable. But, uh, we haven't seen too much of him, but we're going to see him here in this game. Which Radiant brings us to our second pick. set of bands as we had Dazzle and Juggernaut removed by, removed by Lonely Boys. And Earthshaker and Outworld Devourer removed by Dream is True. And on to the picks. Nature's Prophet was the picks coming out of the bands for Dream is True. So we're going to see some cliff jungling. No, probably not. But we're going to see some uh, 
So maybe Admiral Bulldog plays coming out from Dream is True and that Nature's Prophet. That should be exciting to see. As Lonely Boys, they went with the Slardor instead. So well, they are two pretty traditional offlane heroes. Now yesterday we saw Slardar not played as offlane, played as a support, Reserve time. babysitting a Phantom Lancer. And surprisingly, it didn't really work out for the team that was running it. It was very unorthodox. I don't know what happened in the draft. They ended up with that situation, but uh, they ended up with a support slider, and it just really did not work out for them. And it was going up against a Darkseer, so it really had no chance in hell of working. But... Um, yeah, now we're going to see a Slardar, so maybe this is a safe lane farming Slardar. I don't think it's going to be a support Slardar, but, uh, but it does show that Lonely Boys is going to be Slardar. willing and able to, far, to, to fight in the mid-game. Um, because if, if they're going to safe lane farm a Slardar, that isn't a hero that's going to scale really late into the game, like some of the heroes that we've seen play tonight with Terrorblade, Anti-Mage. Um, obviously, Gyrocopter is banned out, but he's one of those heroes that as you get later and later into the game. He gets strong. He's really strong in the early and the mid game, but when you get to a really late game, Flat Cannon is ridiculous. But Slark, one of those other heroes, as we see Dream is True pick that up, remaining. as uh, he's he's another one of those heroes that scales really, really well late into remaining. the game. And he gets a Slark with a bunch of items is, is crazy. Radiant what did I say? Lonely back. Boys picking up the Wind Ranger, going with that Wind Ranger as Bacon plays a hell of a Wind Ranger, so excited to see him play that. He's going to be going up against an Invoker in the mid lane. I expect the Darkseer to be off lane going up against Slark. And. 10 seconds remaining. Uh, with another hero, another support that, that's going to be Five their final pick. The remaining. question is is the Undying going to be down there as well? We expect the Nature's Prophet Reserve to be off lane, but they might even bring the Undying up there. Might be a little bit weird. Maybe the Nature's Prophet kind of cycling in and out of the top lane, maybe taking advantage of uh, that new creep camp and kind of having a dual off lane with nature's profit kind of half Dyer jungling using that back. camp that's something that might be a possibility I haven't seen Radiant anyone do that but pick. that's the first thing that came to mind with the potential draft and what they could do um, final two bands are in spirit breaker gets removed by dream is true so that's strong roaming support and shadow shaman gets banned out by lonely boy something that's going to give them nice strong disable is Take a look at Dream is True's lineup, and they don't really have any Disable or Lockdown whatsoever. Their best Lockdown is either Invoker, Cold Snap, Slark, Pounce, Ten or Nature's Prophet, remaining. Sprout. None of those are really strong Disables to really lock down a target. Five seconds remaining. And uh, as for Lonely Boys, they've got a very passive support in an Abaddon. It's Reserve not really time. good at roaming around and ganking, moving around. So they'd be looking for something that's going to be doing uh, something along those lines, a more aggressive support. And that's why Spirit Breaker got banned out by Dream is True. So uh, both teams recognizing the fact that there's obviously a certain type of hero that each team's looking for, but it's not really that difficult for either team to have seen that. It's uh, pretty straightforward. Remaining. It's not like we've got any very complicated drafts in terms of what's going to be coming out, but that is certainly Dyer not what I expected, picked. as we're going to have a Bat Rider get picked up. So I was completely wrong about that Nature's Prophet being an offlane and maybe that duo offlane with Undying. What this looks like is it's actually going to be a support Nature's Prophet and a Batrider offlane. I forget who, but it was um, it was a team in the Chinese scene playing support Nature's Prophet and I, I heard about it and I know they played remaining. it a couple games. I think it might have even been at WCA um, or around Five that time. And unfortunately, it didn't get to watch the game, so I don't know exactly what Which they ran with it. Die. But uh, it was a support Nature's Prophet that they were experimenting with. I don't think it was even really working for them. But we're going to see Dream is True try it here. As I expect that Bat Rider to be off lane. And uh, Undying probably going to stay at home with the Slark. And give that Bat Rider some, uh, some off lane XP. And the final pick is in for Lonely Boys as they pick up the Witch Doctor. So once again another aggressive support. Maybe not the strongest in terms of ability to, to roam around and get some picks. But um, still a more aggressive support, a hero that's going to be able to do a little bit more with gold than uh, an Abaddon. And it's, it's, once again, more aggressive, more offensive than defensive like the Abaddon, who's primarily just to keep people alive. Ten seconds I'm just going to wait remaining. for uh, the players to choose their heroes here, and we'll be ready to start our quarterfinals. Five seconds remaining. I love how... Uh, 
being able to cast all these games and uh, I didn't unfortunately last uh, major for the Frankfurt major and those qualifiers I wasn't able to cast but for for these just being able to cast the entire open qualifiers just following along jumping around a lot early um, in the early uh, yesterday but um, as we got a little bit later we were able to follow some more teams and uh, today being able to follow Loaming Boys you really start um, it's pumpkin crashing again. <laughs> he seems to crash every time they load in. But um, yeah, being able to, to follow some of these teams and just kind of get a better feel for this whole tournament, being able to be a part of it as it goes through the entire uh, the entire way. As we're we're starting to get towards the end, where we've got uh, the players that are really serious about what they're doing here. They're not just joking around, not just making teams with some friends and taking a stab at going to uh, the qualifiers. The main qualifiers but uh, we've got uh, some players that are really serious about this and they want to uh, really take a stab at it they've been playing probably competitive for a while and uh, look at this some of uh, some of these guys even know uh, lonely boys I actually don't know don't really know the guys on DIT I'm sure uh, there's there's some there that uh, I should recognize I recognize some of the profile pictures but I can't put the profile pictures to a name right now but uh, I'm sure I know some of these guys and I've casted them in the past, whether it's casting SCS or even uh, the Dota 2 Canada Cup, if they're playing on different rosters or, or whatever, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, I'm sure I've casted them before, so I don't want to underestimate them. I've already made the mistake of doing that once in this tournament, underestimating S-Class going up against Team YP, which I'll later find out that uh, S-Class is potentially the, the old unknown roster. And I was going into that match thinking that Team YP would just kind of stomp them and run all over them. And that was, uh, it was anything but that as Team YP actually got eliminated in that round by what I called the underdogs. So I'm not, I'm not going to, <laughs> I'm not going to say that maybe they're the underdogs because I don't recognize some of the names. But uh, it's going to be, going to be interesting. They've knocked off some pretty good teams so far. So this, uh, this should be some some uh, some good games as uh, we're ready to go we've unpaused and let's introduce the teams and the players it's on the radiant side we're gonna have team DIT in the brackets which stands for dream is true as uh, it looks like their dream is to get to the majors as we've got white playing the slark for them QR 2015 maybe that should be 2016 he's playing the bat rider We've got ZZB or ZZB. I'm Canadian. I guess you should say ZZ or ZZB, but uh, I think it's probably ZZB. He's going to be playing the Undying. We've got Blizzard playing the Nature's Prophet and Slim Shady. Is this the real Slim Shady? We don't know. He's going to be playing the Invoker. As for our dire side, it's Lonely Boys. We haven't seen them do this yet. As they've smoked up as five, made their way into the Radiant Jungle, they're not going to find anyone, but we've got Huron seconds, Mark playing the Witch Doctor. Pee-wee player, or end planner, is going to be playing the Slardar. Bacon is Beast is going to be on the Wind Ranger. Pumpkin Dota is going to be on the Darks here. I'm starting to think that maybe this is one of the only heroes he can play. I'm joking, of course. And uh, Cheesehead is going to be playing the Abaddon. So it looks like we've got uh, Lonely Boys grouped as five at the bottom rune, and DIT grouped as five at the top rune. But, uh, let's, we're going to the see them just begins. kind of pick up their bounty runes, but look at what uh, Lonely Everybody Boys did as they moved down into the Raiding Jungle. So they got a nice Observer Ward to scout out some of the area around so that Darkseer's got a better time in the offlane. Place a Sentry Ward blocking this camp, as I believe it does, um, it does block. I actually didn't know that there was actually a spot in the trees that still worked, but obviously they've done a little bit more research than I have. Because they got a sentry to block that, and they've also got another sentry to block a different camp. And that's because they recognize the fact that this support Nature's Prophet is going to be uh, moving in and out of the jungle. And speaking of that, he's tried to make a move on the mid lane, and that's going to cost him. As Blizzard trying to run for his life, he's not going to be able to do so. As first blood gets spilt just 30 seconds into this game, as Bacon, his beast, gets the last hit. And that is not what you want to do, is uh, give Bacon a good start here. As Blizzard TPs back to the mid tier one and immediately he gets spotted out and pinged. Now Bacon, it's daytime so he can see across the river so he can see that Nature's Prophet. Doing a little bit of stacking. 
As, uh, now he's actually going to pull to the mid lane using that uh, sprout, similar to what you can do with ice shards. So these uh, ancient creeps will actually rotate all the way around, pat all the way around, and uh, we're going to get the mid lane pulled. So now this wind ranger is going to be uh, a little bit behind in terms of XP because he's not going to have access to that. Those, uh, those creeps in the lane. Speaking of lanes, we're going to have the Invoker going up against the Wind Ranger in the mid lane. We already saw that. We already know what's going on there. Nature's Prophet doing some pulling shenanigans. Top lane is going to be the Bat Rider in the off lane going up against the Witch Doctor, Abaddon, and Slarder. Not really the most typical uh, tri lane, but uh, it might work for them. We'll have to see as the game goes on. We've got Darks here in the bottom lane going up against the Slark and the Undying. It's just a dual lane because of the Nature's Prophet doing the, the half jungling, half pulling stuff. There's a two minute rune will spawn. Bottom rune's going to get picked up. It's going to be an illusion for ZZB. And top bounty rune hasn't been picked up yet, but Bacon's starting to rotate up there. Radiant He's got a bottle already, so we'll bottle that up. It's QR 2015. We'll get stunned up here with the Slytherin Crush. He's going to lose about half of his HP. But he does still have three tangos, and there's really no follow up behind that for him to really worry about. That's just mainly PoE player taking advantage of the fact that he's got some mana. He's sitting on full mana. He can use that and let uh, let his mana regen because he doesn't really. Uh, he can trade a little bit of his mana for some of the regen. Wrap around the mid lane is Huron Mark is coming behind Slim Shady. Is they're going to get some good damage in on this Invoker, force him to use a little bit of his uh, his regen. But this is an invoker just spamming Quast right now. He's got two points in Quast, so he'll uh, be able to regen up pretty quickly as Quast gives you that passive regen. Speaking of regen, we already got Tranquil Boots finished by QR in the top lane. And he's managed to get eight CS up there. And speaking of CS Pumpkin, he's at seven. So both off laners actually doing quite well. As uh, QR is going to get stunned up again in the top lane. He's going to pop the Firefly. And uh, use that to, to get some creep kills here. But also contest the side pull. That, uh, I'm not sure who did it. Whether it was Cheesehead or Huron Mark. But either way they're both there trying to uh, do that pull. And control the lane. Make it more difficult for the Batrider. To really push out past his tower. And get a bunch of XP. He's sitting at uh, level 4 with 131 XP. And Pumpkin's level 4, 323. So slight advantage for the Darks here. We'll take a quick peek at mid lane. 19 and 9 CS for the Wind Ranger. 13 and 1 for the Invoker. So slight advantage for the Wind Ranger. Of course, she's got the first blood as well. Um, on top of that. XP is... It's pretty close. It's still going to be a slight advantage for the Wind Ranger. Level 5 and a half. Invoker will just hit 5 now. He's still... Uh, a little bit behind in terms of XP. But uh, now this will actually bring it back as Nature's Prophet doing a little bit of pulling to that uh, ancient camp once again. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Action in the top lane is QR. He's going to get caught out. He's going to get stunned up. But once again, he's able to run back to his tower as TP support comes in from ZZB and Blizzard. This is part of the, the benefits of having this support Nature's Prophet being able to... Uh, to just jump in wherever he wants, whether it's to a tower or just into anywhere that, I mean, they deem is a good position. He, being able to use that teleportation is uh, pretty advantageous. It doesn't cost him 75 gold every time he tries to TP somewhere. And certainly it doesn't delay the TPs of other people TPing in. But, uh-oh, it's easy to be. Oh no, he's in trouble. He's not going to be able to easily get away the, out of this uh, as a... Uh, the bat rider typically does is he's gonna go down there but will qr be able to get a return kill looks like he will he gets here on mark he's gonna want to go for uh cheesehead as well but slytherin crush gonna prevent him from doing so but he's still going he's not satisfied he needs to get a couple more right clicks he'll find it as blizzard tp's on in and will get the sprout onto peewee player but he's quick with that iron talon able to use that to drop to knock down one of the trees that's going to be quite effective going up against the nature's prophet in the bottom lane, White actually lost a bunch of HP going up against Pumpkin, actually having to pounce away. But uh, he's going to be hitting 6 pretty soon, so he's just going to be able to back out of uh, Vision, use Shadow Dance passive 
to, uh, to heal him back up to full. So he doesn't really have to worry about the fact that he's too low right now. Although he does want to get six. And actually he's going to use a healing salve just to, to not, um, not kind of live so close to the edge. As, uh, always got to be uh, wary of potential rotations. Look at this. Once again, white just doing some damage to Pumpkin. And this is, this is fine for him to trade because he has hit six now. And now Blizzard's going to spread on in. Pumpkin going to eat through the trees, but he's not going to be able to get away. Because he's going to go down. We're seeing the support. Nature's Prophet really starting to work out for them. As they take the lead, three to two. Amplify Magic now on board. Or Amplify, Amplify Damage, not Magic. Now on board for PoE player. And they can now use that to spot um, Bat Rider's positioning. He's already up to 900 gold. Not sure if he's going to be rushing uh, Blink Dagger, but here comes Slim Shady. He's going to get the tornado. It's going to land on both heroes. Kieran Mark throws out the cask. It doesn't have anyone to bounce to as uh, it's just Slim Shady there, but it is going to allow them to get on top of him, but he's still so fast he's able to run away. Lasso is going to come out from QR. Going to pull Huron Mark back, and they're going to allow... That's going to allow him to finish him off with one right click as he was standing in the Firefly for a while there. Now if Lonely Boy is going to back away, they just got the two. Blizzard TP's on in, but immediately into a crush, and they're just going to right click him down. This Nature's Prophet in trouble, he's just dead. Tombstone also going to get dropped. Cheesehead will deny himself. Tornado now coming in onto PoE player who will last hit the Tombstone. So uh, actually, um, Bacon, excuse me, last hit that, so he got the gold for it. PoE player does go down, as it uh, looks like Bacon will be able to escape. It doesn't look like anything is left from Dream is True. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, it's just Dark Seer and Slark doing their thing, just kind of trading blows, doing a little bit of farming down here. Nothing, uh, nothing too exciting. All the actions happen elsewhere on the map. But uh, the Slark sitting at uh, 41 and 12 CS, and Pumpkin's up to 30 and 1 on this offlaner. So uh, expect him to have early arcanes and uh, mech on that Dark Series. He's starting to cut the wave, which puts more and more pressure pressure onto the Slark and more and more pressure onto the tier 1 tower allowing uh, an easy rotation for lonely boys when they choose to to rotate down and maybe push and get a little bit of tower gold under their belt mid lane is uh, evened up a little bit we got 37 and 1 CS on the invoker versus the 41 and 13 for the wind ranger so getting pretty close there Cure is going to pop the Firefly here to deal some damage to these creeps so they don't uh, do too much to the tower and allow him to get a bunch of gold. He's had sitting at level 4. Still needs a little bit more before he's got access to borrowed time. And here on Mark's even fallen further behind as he's level 3. Action in the bottom. This pumpkin's getting picked off there. I didn't, didn't even notice some Shady making that rotation. I apologize for missing that kill. But six to three now for Dream is True. Let's, let's take another look at Blizzard here. See what he's going. As uh, he's picked up a Ring of Bassy. He's got the Boots of Speed. He's got Gloves of Haste. I don't think those are building into a Treads. And as I say that, he picks up a Belt of Strength just to prove me wrong. I was thinking maybe it was going to be a Midas. But uh, he's got a one one three one build. As we see ZZB go down in the top lane. There was no way he was getting out of that one. Pumpkin actually. Oh, okay, he's gonna go to to build into the headdress first before completing his arcanes. Wanted that. Just fine. It gives him a little bit more HP regen. QR is up to seventeen hundred gold. Still waiting for. Uh, I believe he just goes Radiant's blink dagger here. I don't. Uh, I don't see any reason to to go anything else. There's been, uh, some players have been rushing Boots of Travel, but uh, certainly not after you go Tranquils. So, what else do we have? Anything big that's going to be coming out here? I don't think so. The Invoker still just has... Uh, okay, there we go. Staff of Wizards is going to be coming in, so he's going to be going after um, four Staff or Yules. Dyer's top tower that's is his under first attack. item. Bacon's picked up a Point Booster, so he's going after Aghanim Scepter. As Blizzard's actually delivered a second belt of strength. So maybe that's going to be a necro book for him. 
Actually, I really don't know. I don't know what the, the support uh, nature's profits go, so I'm just kind of guessing, really. Okay, but uh, Bacon, ooh, is he going to get caught by an EMP? He's going to burn through a bunch of his mana. ZZB has gone for a 1 1 3 skill build, so maxing Tombstone, which is a little bit Radiant standard, but we have seen uh, a little bit different builds in the last couple days. With those offlane uh, undyings, I, I frankly actually prefer the build he's going. Pumpkin almost has his buckler completed. In fact, he does. He just needs to get into range for his GG branch to complete it. Cheesehead's still really struggling, doesn't really have much gold. As uh, the last game when we saw Cheesehead playing the Abbot and he built into a mech, but they didn't have a Dark Seer on their team, so be interesting to see what he's going to do. And he's going to come and actually take the stack. So they're going to give a bunch of this gold to the Darks here. They've been stacking that up. This Bacon's going to get caught out here. He's going to get lasso pulled back. The Tombstone's already been dropped. EMP's also going to come down as the Tornado should finish him off. And they're going to be able to grab the Witch Doctor there as well. As Pumpkin is in trouble and oh no. He's going to try to run and he doesn't even get denied by the neutrals. Instead he brings them all to that neutral stack. As this is a bunch of gold going the way of Dream is True. As I miss another kill, as ZZB manages to catch Cheesehead in behind Radiant's the tier 1 towers. Tower is under attack. That was a lot of gold. That was huge for Dream is True. Appreciate Picking off those heroes. Three kills, attack. but on top of that, getting all those neutrals. This isn't really going to show us um, the real effect that that, uh, that series of events had. Attack. But three hero kills Dyer's plus taking that huge stack, which was uh, meant for the darks here and uh, really would have allowed him to uh, to get his mech online a lot earlier. Tornado's going to catch Dyer's Bacon. It's some shady gets the last hit on the tower there. Our first Dyer's tower has tower gone down in the game, attack. and Slark yes. finds a kill in the bottom as White picks off here on Mark. Oh, Blizzard aggressively farming, tries to TP out, but Pumpkin's there with the vacuum. And then PoE player comes in with the crush, and they finish off and get the kill on that Nature's Prophet. It's just a little bit of gold going their way, but they'll take it. And look at this, we got Pee Player Dyer's just finishing his Blink Dagger, so he's got attack. Treads, Iron Talon, Magic Wand, and then Blink. But still, you compare that to the Bat Rider, who's already got his Blink Dagger, now he's picked up a Staff of Wizardry. Let's look at, let's look at the net worth. We've got the Bat Rider sitting at 4,800, we've got the Slaughterer sitting at 4,900. Dyer's so, bottom tower is under attack. I mean, that's an offlane bat rider and a safe lane slaughter. It's that's got to be a huge win for Dream is True, having their offlaner basically match the safe lane farmer Dyer's from Lonely Boys. And on top of that, with the with the recent kill onto Bacon, we've had this Invoker pull out ahead. So Slim Shady now is having a he's he's ahead of Bacon only by about 200 gold, but. Uh, there's a definite difference there, and then it's, it's hard to tell between the, the Nature's Prophet and, and uh, some of the other heroes on the team, who's the real offlaner and all that stuff. Uh, who's a, or Dyer's If you even really want to classify him as a real support, but we're going to have a crush here. Blink crush from Pee Wee player, as they're going to try to go in, but it's actually QR who's going to go on uh, Pumpkin, as they're going to lasso him and finish him off. Hero Mark's going to get trapped Radiant's in the trees from the Sprout. As he tries to drop the Death Ward, and this is just Dyer's falling apart for Lonely Boys. These fights attack. are not going their way, as Pee Wee player gonna get trapped. Dyer's He's gonna try to run, as that pounce wears off, but now Cheesehead gets trapped in a Sprout. As they're gonna try to right-click him down, P Borrow Time is gonna get proct. He's gonna try to TP out, but there's that Yule Scepter just finished by Slim Shady prior to this fight. We'll toss him up in the air, as it's basically everyone dead except for Bacon, I believe. I don't think Bacon died Dyer's in that fight, I could be wrong. Yeah, he did not die. Dyer's structures are but another huge gold swing going the way of Dream is True. Now Shackle from Bacon will trap too, but there's going to be no follow-up. Everyone's dead and still respawning. As an EMP will burn through all that mana. As the tier Dyer's 1's down, they're going to start doing more damage attack. to the tier 2, and actually they're just going to back away. They've gotten a bunch of, a huge advantage here with a bunch of kills. No reason to keep risking it. Dyer's top tower you know, is under Blizzard attack. 
TP'd up to the top lane. He was putting some pressure on that tier one. Got an offensive ward in the in the dire side jungle to give them a lot of knowledge of what's going on there and allows them to really push this tier one tower and just be more aggressive with taking controls. I'm gonna draw on the minimap right now. Uh, taking control of that top part so it allows them to farm all that area. And uh, then even allows them to make plays on mid. Although some shady actually getting picked off there. But a lot of these deep wards, like this Observer Ward, um, you see a, a very popular one once the mid-tier 2s goes down. You get some Observer Wards in here. There's a bunch of places for them. But um, yeah, those are very advantageous with spawning early rotations. This last is going to get used on Bacon. Oh wow, Pounce will land! As this Wind Ranger's in trouble now, as he's going to go down, Cheesehead pops the Boro time, but he doesn't have Aphotic Shield up for another second. There he goes, he will pop it, but he's going to go down, not able to deny himself. 17 to 6, dream is true. Let's take a look at the gold graph. Is oh my, almost 10,000 gold leads 17 minutes into the game, and I'm sure it's actually gonna crest over Daya's that 10,000 as soon as it uh, updates in a few seconds here. As for our XP, over 7,500 gold lead or XP lead for dream is true as well. Lonely boys try to get a little bit more as they a little bit of it back as they jump on his ZZB. and they will find the kill there, but. In the bottom lane, they lose Pumpkin at the same time. Slim Shady and Blizzard combined for a kill there. This Quas Wex, Wex uh, excuse me, Quas Wex Invoker. There we go. It's apparently uh, difficult to say. <laughs> um, he uh, he's been doing some work this game. Five one and five. That Yule Scepter coming along at just the right moment to give them another kill on uh, the Abaddon. As uh, speaking of kills, I miss one in the mid lane. As the Slarder gets picked off as. Lonely boys, they're just getting picked off all over the place. They're farming in, in lonely places. And that's allowing this di or this Radiant side team just to pick them off. As they've got so much mobility, so much ability just to be all over the place. They've got the teleport coming in from the Nature's Prophet. Even when he doesn't teleport in, he's got the global presence with Wrath of Nature. The Bat Rider's practically all over the place. He can run around and then you can blink in and force staff. And he can reach you from any distance pretty much. Slark is just damn fast. Damn fast and he can just snake past je uh, wards and also help his team de ward so they know when they're being spotted and when they're not. And then Invoker's really fast as well plus he's got the long range tornado. Just there's there's so much catch on Dream is true. And Dying Lonely Boys they definitely are going to feel like they're attack. behind because well they are. So now they're trying to the farm and be greedy but they keep getting picked off. As Lasso? Actually getting broken there. So it's not going to pull back here on Mark. And that's pretty much one of the best things that has happened to Lonely Boys recently. They're going to be able to bring down this uh, Tombstone. They use the Glyph and they might be able to get the Deny here on their tier 2. They're going to catch the Invoker. Who will actually have to Yules himself up in the air. Wall? Is there a vacuum behind it? No. As, uh, this is a pretty crazy fight. But we're going to have Bacon trapped in the trees here. Uh, Cheesehead already having to pop the Borrowed Time is White. White low on HP. As uh, he'll look to hide in the trees, regen back up and rejoin. As Blizzard's gonna go down, here comes White, coming back into the fight. I think he's coming too early, indeed he has, as he's gone down. Meanwhile, ZZB and QR, they're in the back lines. They're trying to go after Pumpkin, as Slim Shady's gonna get the Deafening Blast off onto the Darks here. It'll run out of the trees, Tornado off the mark, they still find it with the right clicks. As they bring down the... Darks here and the Abana went down while they were also Dyer's chasing the Darks here as well. But uh, Pumpkin managed to get enough gold there in that fight to buy a Blink Dagger. He dropped that wall, but there just wasn't a vacuum behind it. I didn't see what happened to him, but uh, just wasn't able to get that vacuum off. He was kind of lowish mana, Dyer's so maybe he didn't have enough for vacuum, attack. but I don't think that was the case. I think he must have been uh, CC'd by something. But unfortunately, not able to get that combo there. Now we're going to see more items coming out here as the mech's going to get finished on the Undying. Uh, the Slark, which tried to come back in and help his team. He was he was hiding in the trees in here when there still was trees. And then he came out and tried to join in right around here somewhere. As uh, again, this Undying. He's pushing up very far in the mid lane, getting punished for it. But uh, White has uh, he's finished his Shadow Blade, he's got his Yasha, he's already got an Ogre Club as well. Probably going to go S and Y there. Could even be a BKB for him. We'll have to wait and see which uh, route he chooses to go there. Uh, Slim Shady's picked up a Point Booster. Always going to Yule's Peewee player up in the air. 
There's Pumpkin with that wall vacuum. It's just going to be cast on two. In fact, I think it... Oh, no, it does get two illusions, so it does hit both of them. But it doesn't allow them to secure a kill. POE players picked up an Ogre Club, so I'm guessing that's going to be a BKB for him. She said just the Arcanes for him. We mentioned the, the Blink Dagger pickup for Pumpkin. Bacon's completed his Aghanim Scepter and just the Arcanes up on Huron Mark, but he does have 800 gold. So another item is potentially going to be coming out soon. Blizzard's got Necro 3 finished on this support, and I say that with quotations, support Nature's Prophet. Um, QR, he's got a ton of gold. Tranquils, Force Staff, Aether Lens, Blink Dagger, Peewee Player, even Blink Dagger, tried to catch Blizzard, missed. But he will get a Lucky Bash, that'll help them catch. Slytherin Crush back up, so they are going to find a kill on that Nature's Prophet. But is there going to be a re-engage here? Tornado going to fly out. EMP, is he going to hit anyone? No, they're going to get out of the range. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Slim Shady up to 2300 gold. He's getting closer and closer to finishing that Aghanims. About 600 away from having that done. And is, yeah, there's going to be an S and Y for the Slark. He actually has it completed, just needs to deliver the items. We're going to have a smoke here from Lonely Boys. It's, they need to do something to get themselves back in the game. Is Pumpkin going to complete his arcane? So if it was a mana issue earlier, hopefully that'll help alleviate it. No, this is, this is good. This is sneaky. They're going to go into Roche Pit. But look at this. we got a wraparound from Dream. It is true. They're going to find the Witch Doctor. He's dead. Darkseer in trouble. He's going to try to juke and drive in the trees. He is going to get far enough away and be able to blink away. As Roche goes down, we're going to have the Aegis go to Bacon. A Pumpkin. Pumpkin is still in trouble. No, he's not. Tornado misses. They do see him. They ping him. But the TP is already completed. 25 to 11. The SNY comes in. Gold lead. It's... They've stopped the bleeding. Lonely boys are coming back Dyer's in top tower into this game, attack. but it's it's a long way back. Still 10k gold lead, and that's still impressive for 23 minutes in a 10k gold lead. So, oh, it's going to be tough for them. But Dream is True is uh, showing that they're uh, definitely the caliber of players to get this far into the tournament and show that uh, they've knocked off some good teams and they're ready to knock off some more. As they've put uh, Lonely Boys up against the ropes here. In uh, the quarterfinals, I'm I'm so happy to say that we're in the quarterfinals of the uh, America's Open qualifiers for the Shanghai Major. That's awesome. It's not over. Definitely not over. We got Aghanim Scepter completed on the Invoker. They just keep getting more and more tools to use to just out continue to outplay Lonely Boys, and that's really what it's been. They, they had a really strong laning phase. And then they made great rotations coming out of that laning phase, attack. and they just they just had the better transition. And Lonely Boys then felt so far behind, and they were stuck trying to farm. As they got picked off just like this. Bacon gets picked off there. They don't actually get a kill because he's got an Aegis, but that's an Aegis. That was one of the things that was great for Lonely Boys. They were able to um, smoke up and sneak Roche. It got them some golden XP, but it also gave them their gave them that Aegis, which gave them a lot of strength in the upcoming team fight. But that just got eliminated with Dream is True getting a pick off there. And I'm actually surprised that some of these networks aren't as far ahead um, as they are. Like that's pretty close between the Slardar and the Slark. It's only a thousand gold separating them. You'd expect that to be a little bit bigger. Look at the difference between the Wind Ranger and the, the Invoker. Once again, a thousand, just a little bit more, a thousand, thirteen hundred um, gold separating the two. But the big thing is the fact that there's four Radiant Heroes up here all around that 9, 10k mark. Whereas you look at the Dire side, they've got two heroes around 9, 10k. They've got another hero close by at 8,300. So they're kind of hanging around, but you look at the bottom. And the two supports on Lonely Boys, that's where you mainly feel it. The supports are going to feel it early on. The cores, they're going to get supported by the supports, but it's there's no one to support the supports. So when they when the team's not doing well, they really fall behind. And we're seeing just a huge difference in net worth between uh, those supports as the Undying almost has the, the same net worth. 
that the witch doctor and the Abaddon have. This Peewee player's actually gone with a solar crest. Still just sitting there with that ogre club. Look at it go! Oh, QR is going to actually catch POE player, pull him back towards his teammates, Slim Shady and ZZB are there, now Blizzard TP's on in. So suddenly, four heroes, and the Slaughter is getting it picked off. They're going to look for more, but Lonely Boys, they've backed away early, so I don't think they're going to get picked off. As QR, he's got that catch, he's going to be able to catch up to them, but Lasso is on cooldown, so he's not going to be able to bring anyone back. Even with uh, backdoor protection, top tower that tier 2 fallen. tower goes down so quick. So many heroes right clicking, we've got the Treants, we've got the Necrobook 3, we've even got Forge Spirits, I think those were actually summoned after. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are Shackle will land on the Slim Shady, and uh, the Red Necro Creep, which Bacon will actually attack, it'll give him gold, but it'll also deal damage to him when he kills it. Red is dead, if you ever need to, uh, if you ever forget that one, between the necro books. Red's the one that deals damage. Another shackle shot with the other necro book on the Slim Shady. White has gone on to Huron Mark as he's going down. Pumpkin vacuums, just hits White, and there's no, uh, uh, no wall to back it up. But it looks like Dream is True is going to back away, but never mind. QR is going to engage, pulling Pumpkin. And he will get the wall down, but it's not going to do much. There wasn't a vacuum to back it up because it was still on cooldown. And I don't even think he had time to get it down anyways. As Peewee player is going to go down. ZZB getting kind of low, but there's no way Lonely Boys is going to be able to find that kill. It's just Bacon left to deal the damage. Cheesehead could kind of keep him alive. But up against three, four heroes, it's going to be very, very difficult. Now we're going to have a buyback come out from Pumpkin to help defend here. And with that, Dream is True will actually back away. They were thinking about TPing their Nature's Prophet down to the bottom lane, but now he's going to come up to the top lane and help out uh, some of his teammates up here. And look at that. He actually TP'd on in with come, the item, come. with the recipe for ZZB's Guardian Greaves. That's teamwork right there. So uh, he's Blizzard, maybe. Maybe I, it, was, it was a little bit wrong for me to say support in quotations earlier. That's, that's some pretty damn good supporting stuff there. He's basically a courier. <laughs> I guess that's probably just as, a, just as uh, offensive to say. But uh, yeah, he's, he's doing some good supporting stuff. Actually, he's, he's played quite well. He's been all over the map. He's had very good global presence. And uh, just the little plays like that are, are some of those things that go unnoticed, but definitely show the kind of level that uh, these guys are playing at. Illusion. Here we go, smoke from Lonely Boys. As they move through their own jungle, trying to find a pickoff. They see Treants, that's good. It means maybe there's a Nature's Prophet nearby. No, nope, they're going to find him. Blizzard, Blizzard, you're in trouble. Bacon, lashes you to a tree. And you're dead. You are dead. But oh no, Pumpkin. Pumpkin, he tries to run away and he will. He won't get hit by the pounce, so he gets back. And I was going to say... We've seen this before. Lonely boy, they find a pick off, but then they lose another hero somewhere else on the map. It's always trades, and trades aren't the worst when you're behind. It's definitely beneficial for you if you're behind. But um, yeah, that time they actually managed to get away without losing a hero. So maybe, don't call it a comeback, but the dream is real. And I, and I say that, but I realize one of the teams is dream is true. But uh, maybe the, the dream is real for Lonely Boys as they're trying to get back in this. XP, they're down 15k. Net worth, it, it was looking alright for them. They, they they stopped the bleeding, but all of a sudden the, the wounds opened up again as they're they're behind over 15,000 gold. Let's let's actually bring up our items here because it's there's a lot of items coming out. It's kind of hard to cover all of them. So I'm not sure if I missed any. I don't think I did, but... Uh, We've got the makings of a Scotty for the Slark, as he's already got an S and Y and a Shadow Blade. We've got uh, the Aether Lens up on the Bat Rider, which I believe we saw him pick up. ZZB, we saw the Guardian Grease get delivered. We didn't actually mention the Aghanim Scepter picked up by the Nature's Prophet. I'm not sure the timing of when he got that, but judging by his gold, 1200 gold, it must have been pretty recently. 
some shady. We noted all the item pickups there. I don't think we actually highlighted the fact that he got a blink dagger, but... Uh, as for the dire side, we've got Aether Lens on the Witch Doctor. We still just have that Solar Crest. He has picked up a Mithril Hammer, so PoE player is getting closer to that BKB. Pumpkin. Mech. Blink and Arcane's probably going to be going for his uh, his GG boots next, which he actually has enough gold for. So, uh oh, they found PoE player. They're going to lasso him, pull him back. There's an EMP drop. Here comes Blizzard TPing on in, and the Slaughter is dead before he even gets there. Oh my! But that's that global presence. They just all of a sudden show up, and you're dead. Got an Aether lens on the Abaddon as well. I think that's everyone. Bacon, Blink, and Eggs. He's got another 3,000 gold. Which, uh, his buyback's off cooldown, so maybe he doesn't have all of that. 1,600 gold to spend. 1,600 surplus, at least. Dyer's this tier 3 gonna go down. His dream is true. Is Keep breaking down these racks. Dyer's we still got another 30 seconds with the Slardar. No buyback available for him. Because we'll switch Dyer's on over to a buyback status. You can take a look at that in the top left if you choose to. We got White. Finding another kill on Huron Mark. This is exactly the same position. He caught him last time when they were trying to push the tier 3. So now the Lonely Boy only has three heroes. And now they've only got two sets of racks as they've lost the top one. They will have their slaughter up in five seconds, so maybe that'll help them not lose their mid set of racks as the tier 3 is going down very, very quickly. In fact, it's dead. And now they start going for the racks as the TP start coming in. So here we go. Pumpkin's going to jump on in. He's got the wall. He's already used the vacuum as well. As he's going to lose most of his mana there. Peewee player jumps on in. He's going to get caught with a lasso. Pulled back as he is dead. No buyback available for him. Pumpkin's in the middle there as well. No mana. He's dead. Meatball coming down after the fact. Just showing that uh, they're big fans of meatballs and spaghettis. What the hell am I saying, guys? I don't know. But <laughs> Lonely Boys, they've got three left. And they're not going to try to defend Dyer's because they just tapped out. GG well played, get dropped in chat. As Lonely Boys have been Radiant following them for a while. But they will unfortunately get knocked out in the quarterfinals here. As Dream is True will advance and go to the semifinals. Oh my. What a game though. Dream is True. Honestly, like, they just played some damn good Dota. Like, look at some of these records, too. Undying, okay, you had a little bit of feeding moments at time. Sitting at 3, 4, and 19. He had some questionable feeds when he ran down the, the mid, uh, mid lane and get picked off twice. Uh, it's Nature's Prophet, Blizzard, 7, 6, and 16. I don't care what you say, that... that uh, that record is not telling of the performance he had. He was all over the place and he played fantastic on that uh, Nature's Prophet. And I was joking about the support thing, but he, he did a really good job on that Nature's Prophet. White, Slark, 10, 1, and 11. QR, 5, 0, and 11 on the Batrider. He had a great laning phase and he, he got all the pickoffs they needed. What more could you ask from him? And then Slim Shady on the Invoker, 8, 1, and 12. He was on point with almost every single tornado. He missed a few here or there. He missed a few EMPs here or there, but they were they were kind of ones that you're trying to force and not really the most important ones. Um, they weren't the crucial ones in the middle of the team fights, which are always on point. So everyone on the side of Dream is True played fantastic. Lonely Boy, you know, they. I'm not really a big fan of their draft. I thought it was a little bit different for them. I don't really like the safe lane slider. I don't think it worked for them. Certainly the laning phase, Slardar sucks in the lane. And we saw the fact that they had a defensive tri lane of Slardar, Abaddon, and Witch Doctor. Abaddon also sucks in lane when he's used defensively like that. So you have these two heroes that are pretty bad at that, um, at laning like that. Then you've got the Witch Doctor as well. And we saw just QR get a fantastic start. He was beating, he actually beat the Slardar to the Blink Dagger, even with uh, the Batrider being the off laner and the Slardar being the safe laner. Is that's just kind of how the game went for the Lonely Boys. It just didn't work out for them in the laning phase. They had a good start for Bacon in the mid lane. And uh, Pumpkin had some space in the bottom at times too. But uh, then it just kind of fell apart. Once they came out of the laning phase, 
that early lead from Dream is True just kind of kept going with them. But uh, that's going to wrap it up for this one, guys. If uh, you're new and this is the first time you heard me cast, first of all, welcome, and I hope you enjoyed it. I was Niz, and uh, if you want to stop by my Twitch channel, maybe you're listening in-game, it's uh, twitch.tv slash nizcast. I'm going to keep casting all the stuff through the America's Qualifiers. Um, but beyond that, I'm going to throw it to music, and uh, I'm going to rest my voices. I'm going to try to find us a next game to cast. Not sure if it's going to be the semifinals or maybe... It should be a semifinals, but uh, I'll see what we've got to cast. But uh, we've got best of threes in the semifinals and here on out. So that should be exciting. But uh, I'll be back in a bit.